Hey there, everybody. It's just past seven o'clock on Wednesday, November 16th. Um, going to be a long video, but going to be an interesting video. So you may have heard me say this before. I've said it in podcasts and, and other places where if anybody asks me to do something and I can't solve it right away or, or, or it causes me to be frustrated, a lot of times I'll lash out and I'll be like, I don't have time for this. I'm not going to talk to you. I don't want to do this anymore and, and try to, to brush, it, brush it off. And then later on, I think about the question more and more and more because for some reason, if I can't solve it and can't give an answer that I'm confident in, it, not, it gnaws at me. And the question that got asked was about betting and being consistently profitable. And I was like, dad, don't bet a lot. I was like, don't risk it like that. It's sports, it's gambling. But, but I say this beats the odds makers. And if it beats the odds makers, then you should be able to craft a way that you are beating the odds makers financially. And so I was looking at my history to be like, well, can I tell everybody that I'm a profitable wager? And I was like, yes and no. It's like, actually, I can, except I cannot tell people that my big, huge, crazy round robins are profitable over even the moderate term, not even the short term. Long term, I can say yes, but not in the immediate term, meaning you could go a year, eh, probably not a year, but you could go like, definitely three months without catching seven when you do seven of pretty reasonable lies. You can go six months. I mean, it can happen. That's true. I hit two of them over NHL preseason and that made me up for the year for that period of time, but I'm actually down this year overall on FanDuel, not on, not on like live stuff. And I actually am up overall, but I am down on FanDuel. So let's talk about FanDuel because it makes me really review what the answer to the question about how do you bet to be profitable? So on FanDuel, they allow this insanity, which I love. I love using FanDuel because I don't mind losing 15 bucks with a chance at 800 on crazy stuff. And you could, could take Florida Gulf Coast at 1200. They'll let me do that too. And they would pay $4,000 if they pull off a crazy upset, like the algorithm says. So they let you do everything. Other places, like if you walk into a paper casino, uh, and try to do like prop bets and combine them together. I'm right. They're going to laugh at you and be like, sorry, we don't do that here. Uh, and so I love what FanDuel offers in that it is so flexible. However, ever heard the statement, the phrase like too much of a good thing ain't good anymore or whatever it is, too much of a good thing and then something bad. It is kind of too much of a good thing. It, the, the possibilities are so endless that I am doing crazy stuff all day. And occasionally I do hit, but I also spend a lot of time going berserk for weird stuff and losing like a potential couple thousand dollars swing at the end of a game trying to hit an over under which is just craziness it's just it is really nuts lottery so i'm like well well th that doesn't work long term sometimes so then i tried the straight bets for for a few days and they won <laughs> most of the time and i got bored because it was winning and so i went back to trying to hit crazy stuff and i was like all right well I was looking at my FanDuel history and I was looking at my wagers and I go, well, why am I down? I'm down like a thousand bucks this year, like a thousand bucks. Like even a little more than that, I think. I think it's like 11 or 1200 now. Down like 1200 and I'm like, how did this happen? And I'm like, oh, I know why it happened. It happened because of football. Because we're in week 10 of football and I've only won in one or two weeks. I won a little in week two and I won in week eight when I had the Jets at plus 600 or there, 500, wherever they were. Um, so uh, week nine, sorry, the one in week nine, right? Jets one in week nine. So I'm going, going back for a second. So I'm looking, I'm like, well, I've been dumping a hundred bucks at least into football every week. And that's the majority of the problem. I can only think of, of that week nine when I won. So I was like, all right, well, what did I do in week nine? <laughs> the funny thing, I did two things and I said to do something in week 10. I told you guys to only do straight bets for the most part. I, I didn't specify the straight bet exactly, during, but I talked about the Jets being a pick and how the algorithm said that they could win and, and why, why people thought otherwise. And I did do straight bets on stuff and I won. And so it's like, it was really tiring. That was the day. Week, week nine was the day that I did eight or 10 straight hours of staring at my phone and cashing out bets through all the football. I'm sure there were other sports going on as well. And it was an amazing day, but it was exhausting. And I was like, how does anybody do this? I was like, I, I'm watching, I'm making, I'm making calls on like, you know, I make a bet on something at 
at a plus 150 line or, you know, I, I bet some of those football games, you know, it was like I had New Orleans or whatever. And they're off, you know, if people would pay 250, they're offering me like 128 and it's in like the second quarter. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, I got to do the math on this. I'm like, what are the chances the team lose? What are the chances that the team comes back and gets a bigger lead and I get offered a better cash out? What, what's the odds that I'm not offered a cash out late in the game if the game is close and it's 128 or zero? I'm doing all this stuff in my head for all the games that were going on throughout the day. And I was exhausted. And I was like, gosh, this is insane. I could never do this every day. And I can't do it every day. It's ridiculous. You can't focus on anything else. But, but I was like, well, wait a minute. Uh, nobody's holding nobody's holding a gun to my head telling me I have to do this every day, except for people that pay for the file. But they're not forcing me to wager or do in-game cash shows. You guys aren't forcing me to do this, except when I get asked, like, how do you make sure you're profitable? And I'm like, well, you would do this. This is what I would do if I had to be profitable. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm in the Google Sheet tonight, and you will see this. Uh, it's 7-11, 7-11. There you go. Open all night long. 7-11, and I have a round robin uh, wager thing, right? Well, I can also do the straight bet thing. And here's what the cool part is. So we're going to bring in the straight bet stuff, which is not what it is yet. But when I update it, I'm going to put it here. And I have decided that in order to get my $1,000 plus that I'm down on FanDuel, I decided that I would risk another $200 this year. That's what I said. That's it. I was like, if I... If I can't sit down and do what I'm supposed to do and do the straight bets and pay attention, one, I want to know what my hourly rate is, which is going to be very dependent on how much you wager. But I still refuse to wager. I basically said, I'll do two days worth of stuff. It's like, I'll try this for tonight and I'll try it for tomorrow. And I want to see what my hourly rate is. I also want to see if I lose my full $200 tonight, which I think is basically impossible. When you're doing straight bets and you're cashing out stuff, uh, you, you really have to be not caring and drunk to not end up with money at the end of the night. It is not like a parlay where you win or lose everything on one pivotal thing at the end of the game. I was listening to, to a story, um, on the radio because they're all talking sports betting on all the radio stations and everything. And they were talking about a guy who had a football parlay this past weekend and he had, uh, he had a bunch of crazy teams. And the last thing that he had, let's go to NFL real quick. The last thing he had, I'm telling you long video guys, we're talking about sports betting theory. We're going to talk about what I'm going to do tonight and then we'll, then we'll move on. Um, but what he did is he had a bunch of stuff and he had Dallas and Dallas was up by 14 points. I also had Dallas and his parlay. That was a $250 parlay was going to pay uh, 60 some thousand dollars. And he, I think, yeah, I think it was $60,000. He had the option to take four grand in the game it, when it was like second quarter or third quarter in this game. And he's like, nah, he's like, I'm going to ride it out. I mean, they're going to probably win. And so he didn't take the four or five grand that he was offered and he ended up losing in the worst way possible in overtime. Right. Oh my God. Can you imagine having a $60,000 swing on the Cowboys? And that's what he had. And so you're kicking yourself and you're like, man, why didn't I take the four? Why didn't I take the 4,500 in the third quarter? Because it's 4,500 bucks, right? And the reason why you don't take it is because you're like, oh my God, $60,000. Like, are you kidding? I just need Dak Prescott to hold on for 60 grand. I see it. Okay. But here's the problem with that. That's, that actually is gambling that will give you a heart attack, I think. You're going to end up looking like Mattress, Mattress Joe or Hal or whoever that guy is in, in Texas. Mattress Joe, I should say, right? What, what, Bill, the mattress guy, whatever. But it's, a, it's a normal name in front of that mattress. Um, the guy who bets all the money on the Astros and wins, finally. Uh, that, that He looks haggard because you're doing a lot of nail biting. So, so the, the solution to that is to one, either do it one of two ways, which I think I'm identifying both of those ways to do that, is to do that with a very small amount of money so that you're more reasonable when you cash out and have an opportunity to cash out if you can cash out. But if you cannot cash out, then you, you at least risk a very small amount of money. So that shouldn't give you a heart attack because you never really had that money in your hand yet. So always remember that. Um, the other way to combat that problem is to do straight bets so that the cash out amount is never so grand and large that it distorts your view of what percentage profit you've already made. 
because like, what is the point of what you're doing here? Is the point of what you're doing to enjoy watch, watching sports and to have thrills throughout the night? I don't want thrills, actually. I, I like rooting for, you know, guys to score in hockey games, but I like it not being life or death if they do or don't. I, I enjoy it when it's like, oh, wait, oh, that's hilarious. Look at that empty net. Something like that instead of, oh, my God, that was, you know, $56,000 on that empty net goal by accident. That you, you shouldn't do it that way. So when you do one pick at a time, one, you eliminate the house's advantage of making a parlay dependent on more than one combination, which drastically decreases your odds of it occurring. But that is the truth. I try to beat the odds because I think the algorithms are incredible and they can beat the odds, but it's still the odds and it's still outcomes and it's still difficult. But when you do straight bets and you do them at good lines, especially, and you take advantage of in-game cash outs, you can do this. Okay, let's, let's go back for a second. He's talking about 128 bucks and 150 here. Well, this calculation is pretty easy. Um, it is when you hit a certain percentage at a certain point in the game, you just take it. <laughs> you just take it because you're talking about an hourly rate here. So for example, um, as soon as the cash out amount is, let's call it, 50%, it's 1.28, yeah, but it's really that, it's really that minus this, divide it by that. Because here's what I want, is I want an ROI percentage, okay? And that ROI percentage is gonna apply to everybody, we could get errors, right? Yeah, that's all right for now. Um, so this ROI percentage is, we're going to have a threshold where it needs to equal um, 150%, basically. And we'll color code them to see where we're getting offered. And throughout the night, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at these games. You know, I'm going to be like Sabres, right? Sabres are probably still a good one. I'll probably make that bet right now. Uh, they were like plus 134 or something, right? At some point, they're going to start off offering me 100 bucks at the very beginning, even though I could get this. I get it. That is a zero ROI, but it's... It's also not a negative ROI. So, <laughs> so, but at some point throughout the game, right? Hopefully the Sabres get up a goal. Get up a goal, it's all of a sudden they're gonna offer me 150 bucks. And that became 50% ROI. And if it's the first period of the game and it's been 20 minutes and you can make 50% of your bet, you're a moron not to take it. Moron in a one goal hockey game. You're actually an idiot. Because one, if you're talking about an hourly rate here, you can simply reinvest this $50 you just made in the same game when somebody scores a different goal and they make it 1-1 one, one, and all of a sudden you get the Sabres at a better line again. You know, you rebet it and you've already made 50% on your initial unit bet and you're in the first period. Doesn't always happen that way. They don't always up, start up in the game. Maybe they start down, they never come back and your cash out dwindles to something like this. And we'll talk about when you're late in a game and your ROI is, or maybe you're halfway through a game and you're losing, but your ROI is okay at like negative 60%, you know, maybe, maybe they're offering you 71 bucks, right? Because Buffalo ties it up in the second. Sometimes, depending on if you're watching the game, which is really helpful here, you know whether or not this is a good deal and it's a bet you want to get out of. Point is, you have the option. So doing this with the algorithms as a guide, not about football tonight because tonight is Wednesday and there's college basketball and there's NBA and there's NHL. Well, this makes it very, very easy to figure out what to do here. We have Buffalo winning a game in under, I'm going to bet them here when I, when I eventually look at my phone, the other game, it says Chicago can win this, even though it doesn't, you know, it says super close. Okay. That's 145. So we're going to take Chicago and we're going to potentially cash out this game if they get ahead because we'll get a good payout. LA and Edmonton, I believe, why does it say take LA? Because they're playing really well and Edmonton's playing bad, but Edmonton's back home after a road trip. This is a tougher one. And also here's another thing. It's a late one. It's at 10 o'clock. And I'm talking about hourly rates, seven o'clock, 7.30. If I'm gonna work from seven o'clock, which is basically when I started this video, until these games are over, thank the Lord they are not baseball and can't go for nine hours. Thank good they have time limits, right? Then I can work from seven to 10 
and work for three hours. And we're going to see what my 200 bucks invested, because that's what I refuse to do any more than that. I'll give them, I'll give this two days of doing this. And if I'm not showing a significant profit, I am, well, I'll probably keep trying it, but I'm probably going to stop at least saying that it absolutely beats the odds makers because I do say that and I mean it. It absolutely does beat the living crap out of the odds makers. If you had Prairie View yesterday at plus 590, right? They got ahead. They were up the whole game. You could have cashed out this thing. They probably were offering you 350 bucks in the end of the first half. They were crushing it, right? Even though you could have waited it out and watched them annihilate it. There was it was never in doubt. You actually never had a doubt they were up from day from, they were up eight nothing at the start of the game, if I remember correctly. So you never had you never just, there was no need ever to cash this out because it was never close. But you could have. And so the question is: do I bet Florida go, Gulf Coast tonight at plus 1200? Let me see if they are. I'm actually gonna look at that. Well, it doesn't matter, you guys don't care. But what I am gonna do is for those who subscribe to the Google Sheet. Follow this right here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk about in-game cash outs. And I'll probably program it right in here so that we can see what my $200 that's going to be invested is going to end up being. I predict that doing this for, for the next essentially two and a half hours, and I might end up having to do the late games as well, but I'm going to try not to. I want to put a time limit on it because I really want to work on the hourly rate because it makes sense for when you cash out. I think that, ah, okay, here's how we figure this out. I believe that in order to make, let's try to make $100 an hour doing this with 200 bucks. So let's try to make 50% ROI per hour on our initial investment. In order to do that, then anytime, let's say we bet some normal lines, but still good lines, like it's 140 or something. In order to make $100 an hour, $200 bet, you have to be offered 300 bucks, which means you have to be offered 50% ROI. So what I will do is I will make my wagers here. And anytime the in-game cash out is above 50% and any part of the game is remotely in doubt, meaning it is, it's not Prairie View up by 18 the whole game. That one you'd never cash out. But if the game is like tied at halftime and you're being offered 50% ROI or something like that, or they're up by three points, you know, they're not up by a ton in the basketball game. You 100% absolutely take it because we are trying to make $100 an hour on 200. So we have to make 50% ROI per hour. And you're gonna be offered this throughout the game. So I'm going to operate off the mathematical basis that whenever I'm offered an in-game cash out above 50% of my investment, not 50% of the gross payout, but 50% of my investment that we just take it immediately. You could actually write a program to do that pretty easily if you had it connected to, to your interface or your mobile device or however that would work. So that is what I'm going to do. And I, I don't have specific picks for you because I have to turn on the games and I have to start watching and seeing what's available. But but I will tell you that Florida Gulf Coast, if that's available, let's, let's see. They're down nine to 15 right now and they're plus 2,500. I'm going to hit their plus 2,500. That's hilarious. Okay, so they are plus 2,500. So here's what we're going to do. Simply because... It's such a ridiculous line. Okay. I mean, it's such a ridiculous line. I gotta, I gotta log in here. It was 2,500 seconds ago. It'll probably change. I will absolutely wager 10% of my entire bankroll on that because watch what that actually does. So this is Florida Gulf Coast is, let's see if they're still that. They're now plus 3,500. Hold on a second. I want to see what the actual score of the game is. But it's super, 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 super. Early. Um, <laughs> screwed me up. Um, they're plus four thousand, so they're they're starting to not win apparently. Um, but we're gonna. So I, yeah, the point I can't do this and also do the video at the same time because I have to pay attention to the game. It's the whole point of actually working. But we went through the logic of what I'm gonna do, and if you are a subscriber to the Google Sheet and you want to follow along, 
you're going to see me do this right here. And like I said, when 50% or more initiate in game cash out. And I'm, I mean, I'm extremely confident this wins. I, I'm extremely confident this wins. And not only am I confident that this wins, I, I won 700 bucks doing this for 10 hours. And I wasn't even doing a structured percentage. I was actually doing a percentage less than that. Uh, but I, I want to make an hourly rate doing this. So the reason why the, the, uh, the art of this will be how much do you wager? And it's going to relate to the line that you're offered uh, in many, many instances, and also to the security of the pick. So like that is obviously not a secure pick. It's just a pick that the algorithm one often said would win that is on top of this list here. But they're also away at a 2% margin. So it's also, you know, Tennessee is supposed to be a better team and they're away. So it's never anything you would bet a huge percentage of that 200 bucks on. That's why I said 20 bucks or even 10 bucks is probably what you do much, much lower because it, pay, it pays an amazing line. I mean, they're only down 18 to nine. Okay, so there's 3,500 on there. I am putting 10 bucks on that. Doing it right now. Pays $350. Now I'm not expecting them to win. But I mean, has a team from Florida ever gone on a 10 0 run before? I mean, it's happened. So, what happens if they do that towards the end of the half and they're like tied with Tennessee or, or they're just down by like two? Do you know how much of that 350 they're going to offer me? More than 50%. They're going to offer me more than 15 bucks. So, technically, I'm supposed to take it once it gets above $15. And right now, they're offering me $4.31. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do for the next, uh, for the next till 10 PM. And at 10 PM, I am going to do another video and I'm going to hopefully tell everyone, I know it's only really two and a half hours of doing this, but maybe I'll go to 10 30. So we'll do a, a full three hours because I think the games are probably going to end by 10 30. Anyway, there's some basketball stuff. I don't know what a time it starts, but I'm not, I'm not going to bet the late game. So there's things I'm not going to take because I don't want to spend the time doing the cash outs. It means I'm not going to play the Knicks game. Uh, and I'm not going to play late games. Like there's a late hockey game I'm not playing, even though I didn't like, like it anyway. But no, that's not right. The wager was 10 bucks. Um, so we're going to do this and I'm going to paste it in the Gucci. And then after that, I'm going to do a video. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And hopefully I'm going to say, that I have over $500 in my account because that would be $100 per hour. We're not talking about any compounding of wagering. We're assuming that my base unit, my, my base bankroll was $200 and we are basing our unit bets off that 200. We're not basing it off what our current bankroll is. If that made any sense to anyone. Meaning, meaning I would never be able to bet $201 on any pick because I would not supposedly have 201 available. I would only have 200 because that's what we're using regardless of wins and losses along the way, okay? And when we do that, um, we will see if I have over $500 at 10.30. I'm kind of excited to see because I, I, I have a plan. So <laughs> good luck and I'll see you in a few hours.